few people coming in. Perfect, perfect. All right, we'll just give it another minute and then I'll, I'll get going. Um, I mean, while we're waiting, I can show you guys a couple of things in the construction pack, which might be quite fun. Uh, so this is just the version I've got um, set up for this specific tutorial and it's in 2019.3 standard render pipeline. And this is the um, this is the the lighting that comes with it. So um, pretty basic. It just has two directional lights in the scene. I will delete those uh, and we'll start from scratch when we do some lighting. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys, uh, you know, the demo scene quickly. There's lots of cool little props in here. Lots of functionality. Um, you know, like all of these things work. You can like move it up and down, things like that. Um, and not only that, the tracks and things are all. Uh, you know, you can take the uh, the track material. Uh, which is under the materials there we go cool and then you can offset the UVs you'd have to do this in a code I think or if you're using um, shader uh, that way that way if you're using uh, shader graph it's reasonably easy to do so you can basically uh, independently control both the tracks on each side if you wanted to do like a rotation like a turn um, but you know that's uh, that's entirely optional um, but easy to do so yeah, it's a pretty cool demo scene. I just wanted to start off by showing you guys something really cool. Um, this is something we we basically set up here. So, you know, like, oh, I bought construction. You know, I love construction. It's really cool, but I like city. It's like, I want to put these together, you know. Uh, cool little tidbit. If I actually add city to the um, to the, to the project, it will populate the demo scene with, with the city stuff. So uh, we just kind of went the extra mile with this. Uh, we thought that, uh, why not? You know, as long as people got... Uh, the message that the city wasn't included, which I, I hope we've, you know, been able to make that clear. Uh, you, all you have to do is import it, and boom, you've now got a populated demo scene. So as you can see down in the game view here, um, once the stuff's brought in, it should populate the demo scene, just like one of our maps. Um, one of our map packs, we've basically got uh, a similar setup for this. So, you know, I think it's, you know, just something we can start doing a little bit more of. It's kind of these cool little tie-ins. Uh, it also means that we can restrict our demo scene and make them not as like ridiculously uh, wasteful. We can kind of keep it nice and tight and make something that's actually usable for, uh, you know, implementation in your game. Uh, the other demo scene, the uh, so there's two demo scenes. There's this one, which is the city. We've got a town one as well that has a house being constructed. Um, it actually replaces one of the towns. So you can bring a polygon town uh pack and it will populate that demo scene and one of the polygon town buildings has been replaced with the construction area for a house so that's pretty cool as well um so are all of the assets of the pack in the map no some of them are in the second map which is the house one um cool i'm gonna kill my emails because that's gonna get really annoying uh, there we go um so if I go back to here, uh, we should now have Polygon City stuff in our scene. So here we go. Ah, that's weird. I wonder if this is because I hacked it into the scene. Yeah, probably. Okay, well that was uh, <laughs> that didn't work too well, did it? So what I did with this project is I didn't actually legitimately um, bring this in this is just the submission version so it's got a few kind of like cheats on it so uh clearly that doesn't work with just bringing in this here to replace the prefab so um i'm assuming that uh the full version will work probably with that but anyway regardless the the city scene should be in there um i've got another scene here which is the uh, house demo scene which includes all the house demo stuff uh and that's a good point i guess i could try reloading the scene Usually it just pops in. Ah, there you go. Good point. There you go. Thanks for that. Um, usually it should just pop in because it should read the, read the linkings. But yeah, because I hacked it, uh, I mean, this is the this is the submission version, then yeah, that could be it. But anyway, yeah, there you go. So um, if you have Polygon City, uh, you just bring it into the project and then you've got a really cool construction set in the Polygon City demo, all nicely positioned, all nicely working. Uh, you know, we've, we've included like, you know, it, you've got all this cool stuff in there. So uh there you go if you want to just have a really simple easy way of getting a cool city scene uh just bring in polygon city and bring construction together and then boom it'll work so they we designed it from the ground up just to like pop in which i think is, is pretty cool uh, and then not only that the house demo i won't bring in town it just takes too long 
uh, but the house demo will actually sit in town as well. So this is the house demo here. It's got like kind of a semi-modular um, house building set you can use. Uh, and then this one here, will, once again, if you have town, you bring it in, boom, it'll load up town. So anyway, let's go back to our main demo, strip the lighting out and start doing, uh, start doing some lighting from scratch. Um, so this is my game view. Uh, I'm gonna move the camera just to get a little bit closer. I think that'd be better. Um, I'm gonna just pick, I don't know, just something for now. Uh, let me just go here. So there's the camera. So if you've got a camera selected in the scene view, you can press con uh, Control Shift F and it will actually match the uh, game view to your scene view, which is really handy. So I'll just, I'll just pick something like this, get it nice and close there. And we'll just start roughly like this, but I'm gonna mainly be doing the lighting for the scene view. I'm not gonna worry too much about the camera. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll delete our two lights. Uh, now you'll see that the scene still kind of see uh, this is basically the um, under the lighting settings. So you've got your uh, your skybox sitting here, which is basically adding the ambient light. Uh, I'm just going to leave that at the default value because that's typically what people are going to have when they're importing all this stuff or they're doing whatever. We typically try to leave it pretty default. So anyway, I'm going to leave that how it is for now. Uh, so we've got a scene here that's got a little bit of sky light, skybox lighting. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to go lights, directional light. Uh, and this is going to be our main directional. Uh, to come from a camera um, a little bit just so we can start something that's a little more accurate. I'm going to do soft shadows. Uh, I'm now going to fiddle with these things here. So people hey, are there gaps and shadows? Why are there these little, um, little gaps? Um, and it's actually easy to fix that. So where's a good example of it? Like, yeah, there. Um, all you have to do is just change the normal bias down. Uh, you probably don't want to go all the way. I don't know what the uh, what the ramifications are. And then there's also the bias. But the bias, you've got to be careful because it will actually screw your shadows up at a low value. So you just want to take it to just where it's looking good. I've got shadows on most of the stuff working and I'm not getting too many artifacts. Uh, so that fixes two issues. Uh, now, all we need to do is go and uh, start tweaking our light settings. So obviously the main directional, a little bit warmer is preferable. Um, so I'm just going to go a little bit warmer on the light, just a little bit. And then I'm going to create a second directional light, which is going to be our kind of our fake, uh, skybox fill. So we're not going to rely on the skybox too much. We're going to use a secondary light. If you're, if you're using a, um, a platform like mobile or something, you probably wouldn't want the second light in there. Uh, it's certainly not going to have shadows on it, so it's not too heavy. I'm going to drop that right down and it's just going to be really subtle and it's going to be, um, like a blue kind of like, um, backlight. And it's just going to be filling in a bit of that color in there. See how, how, when I'm pulling that up. The color uh, around this area here is just kind of, it's just bringing in a little bit of a nicer kind of vibe, you know? So we'll go with something like that. I am going to make my main directional. I'm going to add a bit more angle to it because I like shadows. Shadows look good, especially in screenshots. I'll add a bit more angle to it. We might even pump up the brightness. So I think that's looking um, pretty great for uh just the default lights with nothing else happening um uh, because i'm recording it is a little bit laggy i apologize uh but it's not too bad uh i don't know about the lag if there's some uh there are some serious audio issues on the stream rendering updates and stream center i am using the fast um streaming i'm wondering if i maybe tone that back to the the laggy one um can you guys understand what i'm saying at all in the in the chat choppy audio once in a while yeah i'm wondering if it's the it could it could be anything could be my internet i don't know uh yes most of the time it's not perfect but it's fine yeah. okay cool i mean we're going to try and improve this uh as we go and i think a lot of it could be um potentially uh yeah it could i don't know it could just be obs only choppy when you're just things to make. i mean i can also drop the fps to 30 as well so um happens when you do something kidding you okay cool okay no that's cool i will um i will just be yeah i'll just be careful to not do anything too heavy we should be fine now that the lights are placed rotating lights will actually cause a lot of lag um depending on what you're doing and this is a big scene so i will i definitely will lighten the scene a little bit that's probably a good place to start so i'll just turn off um polygon uh polygon city real quick we don't need that in the scene for now and that'll help uh so looking pretty cool right we've got something that looks decent it's got nice backlighting even stuff and kind of shadow looks cool 
let's start by making this thing look a hell of a lot nicer. So we can come up here to, uh, to window and go package manager. Uh, and then basically we just need to wait for the package manager to load. Uh, and then we need to go up here and go all packages uh, and refresh this. It takes a while to show all the packages for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, come on, load up for me. There we go. Got it. Uh, so I just want to bring in. Uh, I'm not sure what the the, the difference is. Let's just go with the older version. Yeah, 2019 points re verified. So let's go with that. Uh, so you just click install. So basically, I've opened the package manager. I found the post processing stack. I'm now going down to install. Nice and easy. Shouldn't take too long to load that up. Yeah, I think it was definitely those lights. Um, which is fine. I mean, it's not going to be often that we're <laughs> rotating directional lights around and we can keep this stuff in mind. I mean, there's certainly other stream platforms out there as well, which we can test. Um, we're still kind of learning. So there we go. I now have a post processing stack in my project. Now, the post processing stack to me is kind of a mystery. Uh, the way it works is uh, quite weird and backwards. Uh, especially with this version. It's not as easy as just applying a profile to a camera. So we come down to our thing here, to our camera uh, component. Um, and now I want to add a post-processing layer. Uh, and then I want to make sure my camera also, this is very important, my camera also needs to have post-processing enabled, uh, which is... Um, Where is that one? Physical camera club and plans, rendering path. I oh, know that looks fine. Okay, so I want to have my layer, which is none. Uh, I need to change that. So I, I think we'll just start with just some anti-aliasing. It's probably a good one to start with. Let's just start with that for now. Uh, they're fast. Anti-aliasing is reasonably fine. Uh, layer, everything. Yes, I want that. Uh, now I want to apply my actual process processing volume. So I have this. I need to go new. I need to set up a volume. So we need to go and actually make the volume there. Cool, that looks great. Uh, I need to go is global, because I want that to be everywhere. The priority, I don't know if that actually makes a difference, but I'll just set it to one. And then you can go down here and go add effect, but I'll do it to the main profile, so it's gonna be a little bit easier for you guys to follow. So I go unity, and I always start with bloom uh, as an effect that I can actually see what's happening. Um, so there we go, that's working. Sometimes it doesn't work. I, I have problems with this thing all the time, but anyway. Uh, I like having a bit of bloom. I like pushing my bloom up and I like having my threshold. I like going really low on the threshold and then really low, and then very subtle on the uh, intensity just so I kind of get like a nice soft um, halo over everything. Bloom is totally uh, your choice. You know, if you're doing something whimsical and kind of fantasy, you might want to change it up. It really depends what you're trying to do. Uh, but you know, I would just start with, I would start with, uh, I probably wouldn't start with bloom as a post effect, but I would certainly use it to figure out if the post effects are actually working because some of the post effects don't really do a hell of a lot. Um, I'm not sure about the post effects in previous versions of unity. I'm just using 2009. I think it's the same as this method. Uh, we use post processing stack V1 still because we're submitting in an older version of unity, but they're very similar in settings. So anyway, I'm just going to turn the bloom off and we're going to start with my favorite effect, which is ambient occlusion. Now, this currently doesn't work in URP, um, which is why I currently don't like URP because it's missing a lot of these like uh, clear features. I'm going to use the scalable one, which is what I'm familiar with. I'm not sure what the performance difference is on the two, and I'm just going to change it to high. Uh, and then we should be able to start putting ambient occlusion in our scene. Now, this, this is very helpful uh, in areas that are in shadow. So as you can see, we've got ambient occlusion here. I can change the radius, I can make it bigger and smaller. Now this will also be camera dependent too. If I pull my camera back, um, the ambient occlusion is gonna start doing, uh, you know, it's, it's totally dependent on the, the distance of the camera and the scale of the scene. Um, but as you can see in areas like down here, uh, we, we absolutely need ambient occlusion. Like if, because this area is not in shadow and this stuff here just looks really kind of washed out and hollow, it almost looks like it's floating. As soon as we start putting a little bit of ambient occlusion in there, we start to ground things and we start to add a bit of detail and it just looks really nice. So ambient occlusion is really important for areas in shadow or night scenes. 
it does certainly help with uh, stuff that's not in shadow so it certainly will help with things like the boxes and bringing out definition if i turn it off you'll notice that it's just adding a little bit extra um, ambient occlusion is reasonably heavy but if you're developing for pc or even if you're just prototyping go for it you know uh, it's a fantastic um, effect and it just looks great. You will have the odd issue, so um, sometimes uh, things that have transparency can have issues and, you know, there's a, there's a couple of caveats, but in general, pretty good, you know. Um, great effect, easy to use. Uh, so yeah, that's looking pretty cool. I think that's a good start. Now, you know, and then I'm just going to flick my balloon back on. I think just to make it easy for you guys to see, I'll just, I'll crank the threshold up. And I'll pull my uh, I'll pull my amount up here, and I'll put my threshold down. I'll just have some kind of some hot spots. I think it's probably a bit safer rather than having the whole thing overbloomed. Um, a lens dirt, if you've got one, is really handy to be able to throw in. I don't actually think this version of Unity has lens dirts included, um, but the dirts are amazing. If you get some uh, lens dirts, go for it. Chuck some in; they look fantastic. Uh, so we're starting to get there. Um, we need to add a, I think a vignette's always a real powerful one. Uh, that just, it'll just add a little uh, halo around the outside of the screen. Uh, so something like, just a little bit. Like that maybe, yeah, just a, just a little bit. It'll be easier when you've got the rest of the scene in here because we've got a grey uh, background. Just a little bit, and I also like changing the colour to dark blue. I don't like uh, having the vignettes black. So I usually just go kind of a darker blue color. Something like that might look a bit nicer. Now, uh, the scene's already looking a bit drab, desaturated, and it's lost a lot of its like cool look. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck a uh, color grading on, I think it is, in this version. Sorry, I don't use this version uh, all the time, so things are a little bit different. So contrast is an important one. Uh, I would just add a little bit of that. I'm going to add a bit of saturation just to like make everything pop a little bit, you know? A little bit of saturation is not a bad thing to add. You can totally go for that. And temperature. I always try and uh, I always raise the temperature just a little bit to make it a bit warmer. Um, warmth in a scene is very powerful, and it can um, you know you can definitely set like kind of a mood and a time of day with that. Uh, but you know I just I feel like the temperature settings is a really important one. So uh, if I turn these off, you can see what temperature does. Uh, temperature will actually just it'll take that kind of cold. Uh, desaturated feel and it'll just pump a little bit a little bit of life into it you know like it'll kind of prick the cheek a little bit if you know what i mean uh and then i will come back down turn my contrast back on and then uh, yeah obviously a little bit of saturation now's where things get a little bit ridiculous uh so this is very finicky and very artist driven um but you can grab these wheels and you can you can basically change the kind of tone and feel of it so i can go like i can go like instagram you know boom or I can go uh, Borderlands or something, you know, like you can go real crazy with this and it, and it really adds a lot of style. So I typically uh, personally like taking it kind of in the Instagram route where it's a little bit more purples and blues. Um, but for this scene, we could try something a little bit different. We could go with something a little bit more vintage or retro. Uh, I never try and take these too far because you've got three wheels, you can kind of um, take them, you can kind of take your time and figure out uh, and then just kind of multiply them on. Uh, and I just kind of use them in, I just kind of use them in tandem with each other. Uh, so there's no, there's no instant like click a button, boom, you got nice lighting. Like this stuff is all so uh, a matter of perspective, you know. I'm just swizzling them around, having a look, just seeing what I feel. Feel looks good. Probably, I think a little more on the lift, eh? And the lift is giving me some nice results. Um, so let's. Let's pretend that looks cool. I think that looks okay. Uh, the next effect. So, um, I don't know if I really need to use any of these other ones for the time being, actually. I certainly don't want to be using auto exposure or anything like that. Uh, now, you can use uh, high dynamic range and all that stuff, but uh, I personally would just avoid that unless you need to use that kind of stuff. I'll turn on Polygon City and you'll be able to see with something that's a little bit more familiar. So this is the kind of lighting we're looking at now. Uh, and it's a lot more kind of accurate to our screenshots. Uh, so if I turn off post-processing, you'll be able to see uh, what the, the default Unity looks like compared to what it looks like without post-processing. Uh, and I think it, it definitely changes the tone and the look a hell of a lot. 
uh, so we could see we've got like these kind of highlights and, and that kind of thing. So um, let me turn off the grid. There we go. That's better. Uh, so I think with the empty aliasing and then a bit of ambient occlusion in there, everything's looking really nice. Now, ambient occlusion, once again, is a problem because of um, scene scale. As soon as I pull my camera in, it's going to kind of start breaking. Uh, so I probably want to just go back to my ambient occlusion and drop the uh, just the intensity a little bit, just so it kind of holds up a bit better. Um, so you guys can see these shadow uh, cascades, right? You guys can see, I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the quality of the stream, but you can see these rings. Um, and that's basically a directional lights in the scene share these shadow maps. Um, and you can change the shadow map uh, uh, kind of radiuses and things within Unity to um, improve these. So uh, if you just go edit project settings uh, and then go to the quality tab, you'll then come to this thing here, which is the, um, the, the shadow cascade settings. Now, as you can see, if I start dragging these, it'll actually change the cascade radius. Now, I probably want to have a little bit larger at close, and I probably want to just spread these out a little bit um, because I'm already getting like a breakdown in the shadows, as you can see there. Now, the next thing I need to really uh, keep in mind is in the directional lights. You also need the bias is going to start playing into this. Um, so, as you can see, I've got those rings there because the bias is just too damn low. I need to start bringing the bias up I need to start fiddling with these things here and I need to try and find a good middle ground. It's it's quite tough, um, but you can easily kind of, uh, you know, get there by just playing around with the settings. Uh, but by, it's kind of a, they're, they're kind of all interconnected. So always start with bias, work your way from there. So yeah, that's looking pretty cool. Uh, the cool thing about these scenes is I can potentially, uh, this will be on the camera, these uh processing post-processing things i've added so i can go i can copy this uh, and i can go to my uh, other demo scene and hopefully i can just paste it in uh, let me just go to the house demo i should be able to just copy this wherever i want so you can set up a bunch of these and just have them in a folder somewhere there you go that totally works uh, but i've got another camera in here so that's gonna be overriding so if i delete the other camera i should get my new lighting fix in here so there you go um, we can we can basically get uh, you can basically have these cameras set up in your master project and you can always cycle between them. Uh, you could also control it with the post-processing profile. So this profile that I've got here, you can duplicate that and make another one. You know, we could do a night scene. Um, I think the, I'll show you guys a night scene real quick in this scene here. Uh, actually, no, I'll do city. City's a good one. I think uh, people have been asking for that for a, a while. Uh, nope, I don't want to save that. Can't see the project settings. Yeah, they're just under, it's under edit project settings. And then it's just in the quality tab. So this is the project settings here. I've got it here just because my face. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you guys can't see because my face is over it. That makes sense. Okay. Um, <laughs> good point. There's the project settings there. So when you've got your shadow in the scene, uh, you'll just need to uh, swizzle these a little bit. So these are basically the radiuses. Um, you won't need to do too much with them. Um, but you just want to make sure that they're, they're at like decent amounts. You know, you probably want to make sure that you're, if you've got like far distance shots, you want to make sure that you're kind of spreading your cascades out. If everything's up close, bring it in uh, nice and easy. So I'll put that back down there. So night scene, uh, Polygon City, uh, this is kind of going off on a tangent. Polygon City actually has um, emissions, emissions set up and all of these things. So if I go and set the emission here, uh, that's annoying. Have they changed the settings to this? I guess they have. Yeah, there you go. It's all done with the mask now. That's kind of annoying. So anyway, I will set my, my lights to uh, city lights. There you go. I'm making real warm, eh? Warm's good. Cool. Uh, now we need to start with dropping the skybox. Oh, actually, no, the skybox is probably fine. Let's start with our lights. So typically in a night scene, uh, you will have a uh, directional light, which is the moon. Uh, you don't have to; it could be overcast or whatever. But I like I like a moonlight, uh, and I will also I'll just turn off my backlight for now, my fill light. So I want to drop my lighting right down, uh, probably something like that. Uh, and then I want to make it kind of like a bluish color. So it's kind of like a, um, kind of, I mean, you can still have it quite bright. There you go. There's the moonlight. Um, this, is that a, uh, oh crap. Okay. So I'm going to just need to hide the skybox for the time being. So I will do that with fog. Uh, so if you come over here to the lighting panel, you can turn fog on. 
um, and I can add a bit of fog to just uh, kind of like darken off the back of the scene. Um, probably less than that actually, probably like that. I will make that kind of like a uh, like a hazy bluey color for like a nighttime scene. Uh, now we've got a separate sky box you can get, Simple Sky. I may as well, I may as well grab it. I'll, I'll show you guys Simple Sky. Simple Sky is pretty cool. It's free. It's been in the store for a very long time and a lot, a lot of people know it exists. Uh, but it's actually a fantastic resource just because it has a dome in it uh, that hit with inverted normals. So it's very easy just to chuck in a scene. It's very light. It's very simplified. And it doesn't use any custom shaders. So it's just basically done with a texture and like a UV strip. It's kind of a cheat, but it totally works. It's beautiful. So if I bring in my simple sky uh, prefabs and bring my sky dome in, yeah, there you go, boom, perfect. And I just need that basically to um, to kill the sky in the background. If I turn the fog off, you can see simple skies there. Uh, I've got a few cool settings with simple sky. I can come into the material for it, and I can actually change just the UV offset, and that'll change the time of day. So I could even have that for my sky. I'm gonna turn my fog back on. I'm just gonna drop the amount of it just so we can see a little bit of that skybox in there because it's quite cool. Uh, zero seven. So I've gone pretty pretty crazy. I've gone 0 0.000007 on the exponential uh, there. So cool, looking pretty good. Starting to get into a nice little night scene. Now, night scenes require a couple of things. And one of the big ones is it needs heaps of bloom, uh, in, my, in my personal opinion. Uh, because you want those lights just to be like shiny, you know? So I wanna probably uh, throw the threshold down. I want that moonlight to be glistening, you know, like really blowing the camera out. Yeah, like that, something like that's good. Um, I think maybe my lights are probably a little bit too generous uh, in this scene. So I might just go and change the Polygon City material, HDR value uh, down a little bit. We'll just make it, yeah, maybe like a little bit, uh, like, I don't know, I guess that'll do. Cool. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's kind of getting to where you want to be for a night scene. Um, if I turn off, uh, oh, they probably not sitting there, it's quite nice. So yeah, it looks not nice with the skybox and things. The clouds probably need some adjustment. Uh, you'll probably find that your clouds are going to be too bright, so you might want to take them in like a, a different direction. So if I go into here, uh, I could probably add like a little bit of a, a warm color to them. I could drop the, the main color down a little bit so that they're a little bit darker, a little bit warmer, because sometimes the, it'll be nighttime, but the clouds will still have a bit of color on them. I could probably drop my emission on them as well, maybe. Something like that would be fine. That looks like kind of uh, like a night night one. And then these little stars here are part of the um, simple sky skybox. So that's essentially a night scene. I mean, that's kind of what we did for um, gang, gang warfare. It's not anything too crazy. Uh, you can still tweak these uh, camera values more. Um, so scenes, polygon structure, post profiles. Obviously, I've got it all keyed up with the other things. So you can always drop the um, the temperature. So you could go like colder and then it becomes more nighty. Uh, I still kind of like having it warm even if it's night. But uh, we can certainly drop that. Uh, we could definitely play around with the saturation. It could be more desaturated at night time. Uh, or it could be more saturated at night time depending on what you're doing. Uh, and we can also play with these too. So a nighttime scene, I might want to take it more kind of in a bluer direction than I had it before, which was kind of warmer. You might want to go a little bit colder. Uh, that's probably pretty good. Uh, and then another couple of cheats you can do is, yeah, obviously the ambient occlusion is going to play a big part here. I want to probably crank that up quite a bit. I can have more AO at nighttime and get away with it because there's a lot less going on. So if I go with something like that, boom. Um... Cool. So, I mean, that's essentially uh, the gist of it. I mean, we've now got a nighttime construction scene with these guys all doing crazy stuff. You know, they're all like, uh, you know, they're all building in the night. Uh, and we'll just put a couple of light effects in this. So if you guys have never used a spotlight, these are really cool for doing headlights uh, on vehicles. So you can, uh, you can just kind of place them wherever you want. Uh, and then you can turn up the uh, intensity and then you can just have like two of them. And they're not too expensive if you're not rendering uh, shadows with them. Uh, but, you know, you can certainly have like a little vehicle there. He's like hooning around, doing some stuff. You know, you can you can parent them to the vehicle as well so that the vehicles will technically work. Um, we put a lot of lot of work into these vehicles. So uh, there's a lot of functionality that works. You can rotate them and uh, even the, the little legs on this thing, uh, if I can select them. 
uh, you can put them down. So we've got we've we've gone to town with these vehicles. We've made them very functional. So um, we're super proud of this pack. It's uh, it's looking really cool. Construction certainly not the first thing that jumps into our mind for like craziness and cool factor, but um, it was actually really fun to work on, uh, and certainly really enjoyed working on the vehicles and stuff like that. So. Uh, we hope you guys really enjoy this pack. It's um, it's pretty special, and um, I think it's you know it's definitely got some really cool stuff in it. Uh, it has a bunch of cool vehicle uh, characters and stuff too, and you know I think it'll go well with most games. You know if if you're making a um, an FPS or something, you can you can have you guys running around. We've included an elevator you can enter, so it's got an enterable elevator. So you can enter the elevator, you can ride the elevator up the top of the uh, elevator shaft, and you can get off on a level and then hunt people and do all sorts of stuff. So. Uh, pretty cool. So yeah, if anyone's got any questions, just feel free to ask them. Uh, I will answer them. Uh, as we have a little bit of question time. Um, yeah, so this, yeah, I don't know how the... Oh, here we go. Is polygon ports going to be a thing? I uh, don't know yet. I like boats. Um, I would say that we wouldn't... We probably wouldn't touch polygon ports until we've actually done... Um, some proper water or something first you know like i think that uh you know eventually yeah we'd love to do it uh never really used all of those settings programming here there are so many things you tweaked now would be awesome to get more videos like this well i mean essentially that's the most of the stuff we're tweaking is just those settings that i just showed you like those the you know i know there's a lot there to do but if you can just replicate those settings then that's you know generally gets you most of the way there um, we actually had a pack on the store that we used the post-processing stack B1, and it just included a bunch of those settings that people could use, but uh, it got depreciated, and uh, we can't take the risk of releasing something like that again because they'll probably depreciate. It's just they become irrelevant too quickly that it's kind of useless if we release it. So, um, yeah, no, we'd definitely be looking at doing more of these. Do you ever do bake lighting? I personally don't do bake lighting uh, that often. I... I mean, you can use it for GI and stuff, but we're moving into the uh, into kind of the. Uh, I mean, for mobile and stuff, obviously you might need to, but for for PC development and, and for next gen consoles, um, we're just moving. We're moving at a, at a in a direction of of having everything real time. I personally like it real time because it means you can change time of day. Um, certainly, a lot of games these days are relying less on baked lighting because it means you can change. Um, you can have like better effects on stuff. You can you can easily modify stuff. Um, a scene bake for a scene like this could take you know hours you know and then you get one area you got to rebake it it's a big time sink for an indie team too so um, if you do a giant bake and you find one little issue and you have to rebake the whole thing then you know you could be losing days just trying to fix baking issues and it's like well you know you could have done other things during that time so it really depends what you're doing i personally like keeping things real time um generally you know these scenes especially run fast in real time so you know especially if you're on pc you'd be fine um so it just depends uh, I don't like baking. <laughs> it's probably my, yeah, that's probably my word on that one. It's just, I always have problems with it and it's a nightmare. Uh, I haven't seen a single pack that was not well done. Thank you. Yeah, basically, yeah, that's, I just wanted to show you guys some lighting. We've been planning to do this for ages, but it's just, every time I try to do it, like, Unity crashes or, you know, I mean, I'm lucky I didn't have crash now, uh, but it's just really hard to, like, show it. So we, I was just like, let's just chuck a chuck a Twitch on, you know, let's start doing more of these Twitches. If it only takes 30 minutes and we can show you guys some cool stuff, you know, go for it. Uh, is there an easy way to add colliders to all these assets or do people just create new pep? Okay, so these all have colliders. This entire pack has colliders. Um, some of them have boss colliders. Some of them have generator colliders. Some of them have a bunch of boss colliders. It just depends on what's good for what. Um, some of our packs don't have colliders. Um, we're slowly working through that. So we never released with colliders up until about three months ago. So for our entire time making assets, we never had colliders. Um, just because they are very specific to a game. Even now we're adding colliders and yet uh, there's still a lot of people saying, oh, I'm, I'm annoyed that you're adding colliders because now I have to go delete them to change them to my own system of colliders. So um, it, it's been kind of very contentious, but we think that in general colliders are good. Um, but we're slowly getting through the collider thing. Temporarily, uh, you can just use mesh colliders on stuff if you need to. It's heavy, but I did a test on Apocalypse. I did the whole Apocalypse demo scene, uh, and I didn't lose much performance at all. And um, if that's you know if that's the temporary solution, go for it. You know we will be adding collision to everything over time. Well, the Polygon series especially. I'm not too sure about the simple stuff. Um, simple stuff can get away with mesh colliders, like it's pretty light. Um, but we're slowly getting there. Um, yeah, we're looking at doing more streams. Uh, 
what are the recommendations for lighting with URP? I tried to do a, uh, a play around with lighting for URP. Um, URP is, is missing a lot of features that are critical to being able to do a lot of the stuff. So URP doesn't have any inclusion currently. Um, it's missing proper anti-aliasing, like uh, the color space that it's in is, is, is weird. Uh, URP is not far enough along for us to be able to offer assistance with lighting in it because it's very experimental. Uh, I would, uh, I mean, I would basically recommend a few of these settings. I would do do what I've done in this demo here, but just keep in mind that a few of the settings don't work. Um, but it's very similar. So URP will be very similar with the same stack and the same settings. It's just a few of the settings don't actually currently work in URP. So you'll just need to have a play around with it. Uh, but we'll definitely be looking at doing some URP guides once uh, it's a little bit more stable. Uh, hi. Hi. Uh, cool. I'm glad you guys uh, came along to the video. Um, we're going to be looking at doing more of these. Uh, once again, a lot of these things uh, for the Unreal guys, we'll, we'll look at doing an Unreal one. Unreal was actually pretty similar. It has the same stuff. It even has the wheels. It has the ambient occlusion. It has the bloom. It has the, the little color grading wheels. Um, it has the same light settings. Like literally, you could take this and you could do this in Unreal. It's just everything in Unreal is in a different spot. That's the only difference. Uh, but the lighting methods used here are almost identical for Unreal. Um, so we can definitely do an Unreal one at some point, um, showing some lighting there. Um, so yeah, I, I uh, you know thanks thanks everyone for coming along. I'll show you guys just quickly for, for anyone that missed it the other demo scene. Um, so once again, if you bring in uh, an asset pack into uh, if you bring City into this, it will populate it. Uh, but let's just go over to um, house demo. Uh, I will save that because it looks amazing. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, this is our other um, scene here. Um, this is just with the default lighting. This doesn't have the um, the post effects profiles, but I just thought I'd show you guys the. Uh, this is pretty cool. I'm proud of this. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's load this up. So for anyone that missed it, basically if you bring in town uh, or construction into the demos, so um, one of the demos is a town one, one of the demos is a city one with the uh, industrial. Uh, if you bring each of the pa packs into the kind of like these scenes and you, and, uh, and you refresh it, uh, it will actually populate the scene. So you can have, uh, if you've got town and you bring it in, it will populate it. You don't need it, like you can just have the construction stuff and the demos are fine, they're standalone by themselves. Uh, but it's certainly an option if you have it, you know, we just thought that uh, most people will have town or they will have uh, city. So why not, you know, just make it all compatible, you know, totally don't need it, um, but it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Release date for construction, I'm not too sure it's in review. It could be whoever knows how long. Um, with the pandemic uh, and with Unity decentralized at the moment, uh it could be weeks it could be days uh we're gonna try and save this uh i think this video will get saved for a few days on twitch if i did it correctly so that should be pretty good otherwise um 30 people will have uh have the knowledge of uh this amazingness yeah um yeah i think everyone's working pretty uh, efficiently yeah I think they're all, yeah, I think everyone's getting, everyone's working, working pretty good. Um, but yeah, who knows? I don't know. Maybe all the asset publishers are at home and they're like, what do I do now? I'll make, I'll make some stuff so they've got heaps of stuff coming through. So yeah, so um, we're thinking, you know, like if, if this works and people like the communication goes through well and, you know, people can, it says sold separately. If you, as you can see here, I tried to make it as obvious as possible. As long as we don't get too many complaints that I bought this and it doesn't have the town stuff in it. Um, we'll look at doing more of these, um, more of these kind of uh, almost like integrations. Like if we do, if we do something that would just clearly work with something else, then we can just kind of have it there in the scene potentially. Uh, and eventually we might do some bigger maps too. We might do like a big super city, maybe uh, map pack and it comes with um, stuff for a super city potentially. And maybe it takes all of the packs. Um, I think, Polygon Dungeons was, uh, so it worked that time. I didn't have to reload the map. So there you go, Polygon Town, uh, and we have our uh, building site. So one of the houses has been replaced uh, in the Polygon Town demo, and we now have a in-construction uh, house located uh, in one of, the, one of the areas. So you don't need to have Polygon Town, but if you do have it, sweet as, big bonus. 
Um, but if you don't have it, the demo scene's still fantastic. You know, you could basically put this anywhere. Um, it's a little standalone um, and it's nice and easy to use. We made sure that this was just something you could just kind of plop in. Uh, but yeah, fantastic if you do have town, it'll just uh, auto populate like that. So uh, yeah, pretty cool. I um, I hope you guys like this pack. We uh, we had a lot of fun working on it. Um, it was it was very fun. So you know we're definitely looking at look at doing more of these city expansions uh, as we can. So is there any other questions? What pack is road bends? There are currently no uh, circular road bends in any of our packs because they this becomes a math problem um, where a circular bend to loop on itself uh, becomes an issue. So if I let's say if you've ever built like a um, slot car track, you start with one curve and then you do another one, and then by the time you're like at the end of the racetrack, they don't connect anymore. Um, so very difficult to do unless they're 90 degree turns and then that's kind of pointless because it's very limiting. Uh, but we'll look at doing some stuff if we ever do like a racer pack or something. We'll certainly look at doing something. Um, but in the meantime, yeah, there's a lot of uh, road painting tools and stuff on the asset store that work pretty well. Uh, cool. Thank you very much. Thanks for everyone's comments. Uh, I think that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, we'll have more of these we're going to be hopefully doing something once a week would be good um i'm hopeful that we can maybe ask people for you know ideas for for, for future ones and things like that we can we can do some but we've got a we've got a we've got some plans for some uh, initial ones so um, we'll open that up maybe a little bit further along um but yeah make sure that you pop along to these um feel free to ask questions uh you know during these streams it's a good time to to, to ask direct questions uh, and we'll try and get more of the team in in future. Um, but yeah, thanks very much, guys. Thank you for coming along. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh -huh.